Well, students don't learn from teachers they don't like. World's youngest professor, Soborno Isaac Bari, who is known as God of Mathematics, he will be hosted by Dr. Turhani Mabunda, an alumnus of the Da Vinci Institute. He will visit Nukani Education Center and Turhan Primary School to meet and greet students. Professor Soborno Isaac Bari's plane just arrived in Johannesburg, South Africa. Professor Dr. H.P. Klopper came to the Johannesburg Airport on behalf of the Da Vinci Institute to welcome Professor Soborno Isaac to South Africa. Privilege having you here for the first time in Africa, you and your family. We welcome you, and the Vince Institute are looking forward to hosting you this week. Honestly, I am so excited to be here in South Africa. I know it's so culturally rich. Many Bangladeshis and Indians gathered at the Johannesburg Airport to greet the laureate. So what memories would you like to capture this week? He giving a speech with the PhD graduate. I uh, think that's a memory that I would love to share. When I was teaching at Royal College, Dr. Anoufli Lacour was first thinking of hiring a guest professor for her physics class. Well, uh, but her colleagues were raising questions about the age of the candidate because I was only a seven-year-old child at the time. And so uh, the colleagues were uh, thinking, how can this man, uh, how can this minor give a speech in front of 200 people and teach these guys basic kinematics? How can he do that at seven? Yet the abilities uh, of the child made Dr. LaCour dead set. Uh, and the day, and the day he came in, he amazed the students. I was that child, and I thank Dr. Lacour for recognizing that age is just a number. <laughs> So I'll be curious as an opening question to get your perspective of what do you think is the reality of the algorithm in this timeless th uh, space of yesterday and tomorrow? 
Okay, so um, I think that I honestly don't have that much experience because I am only nine and I have not seen the last century. I have not seen how the num these numbers or algorithms, as you call it, have affected the world. But I think that I have just enough experience to say that, yes, algorithms have been affecting the world <clears throat> Un uh, very remarkably in the last few uh, years because the, the algorithm the algorithm is the thing that drives all our mathematical and scientific calculations it is that the, uh, and mathematics and science has been well, really the thing that has been advancing and improving and accelerating in these past few years but also numbers rule the world in the terms of well uh, oh, social media we have been uh, become a lot more involved with technology especially our phones and computers and whatnot in fact i see we are recording with phones right now and some people are on their phones so you, you can really see the mark that uh, all this math and science has made on our world if you can see the mark that our algorithms and our technology has made so it has very remarkably ruled the world and i think that it will become even more powerful on us if we don't try and change something over time and some people are even uh, criticizing this kind of things like it's an addiction but technology is uh, going to make its course whether we like it or not and artificial intelligence is going to be something out of our control in the next few years especially because the artificial Artificial intelligence. Now we created it with an intent and with uh, some programming lines of code. But consciousness can allow something to do whatever it wants. So all our algorithms might turn into androrhythms. So we really don't know whether our algorithms will continue ruling these kinds of numbers, or maybe the androrhythm will take the throne in the future, and maybe even we will be wiped out by artificial intelligence. So I feel like the algorithm's reign has been long, and this might come to an end soon. But it has been ruling over the world for these past few years for no doubt.